several of the benefits of using server components in Next.js specifically come around performance. You can actually see this on their homepage for server components. When you look at the benefits of server rendering and they talk about data fetching, moving your data fetching to the server, ideally that's closer to where your actual data lives. This can improve performance just based on the speed of light because it's having to go less far to actually query that data. And then it gets down into the performance section and it talks about the less amount of JavaScript that you need for moving client components to server components. And then lastly, it talks about the initial page load and first contentful paint. But this actually doesn't work the way you expect if you don't do one small thing with your server components. And I wanna show you what this looks like. So I've got an example here that actually comes from the Deals for Devs project that I've been working on. And what we have is basically a dummy page here. And this is a server component. So this is gonna make a request to a Zeta database to get all the deals. Now this is using Prisma. And so Prisma is gonna do this query for us and return deals back to this component. And then it's gonna use that to actually generate this markup. Now all of this is being run on the server, which means this markup is being generated on the server and then it's being shipped to the browser. So if we come back over here and refresh this, you can see a loader. You can see a loader for just a second and this actually loads pretty quickly. If we uh, study the web of vitals, and I have this extension, which I recommend installing, uh, you can see that everything looks pretty good. All right, so that's green numbers across the board, which is great. Now, what happens though, if we introduce some sort of delay in here? So what if we call a wait of 2,000 uh, milliseconds, which is two seconds? Now, what's interesting is Next.js actually advertises, if we go back to our server components and look at loading performance, and it says that you can start streaming route segments using loading JS and UI components with React Suspense. So basically what they do is they use Suspense behind the scenes to ship something to the browser first while that extra data is being loaded asynchronously and then send that data along as well. So I would think that this would work kind of out of the box and we actually need to make this a wait for that wait. So now if we come back to this browser page and refresh, we see load, load, load. Now the data is there. And if we open up Web Vitals, we can see this is actually gonna lead to a poor time to first byte and first contentful paint. So first contentful paint can't be good if your time to first byte is not good. So time to first byte is the first byte of data about your site that's being uh, received by the browser. Obviously the browser can't render a page until it receives all that data or all that markup in this case. So why is this not working? Well, to take advantage of the suspense part that Next.js has built in for you, you have to actually add your loading.tsx, in this case, TypeScript file. And I've got a little snippet I can uh, dump in here that just has a text of white for loading. That just has a text of loading to give some sort of indicator. So now what happens is Next.js will automatically pick up this loading component and it's just based on name. So it's just a component named loading inside of this directory. And what it's gonna do is automatically send that loading component down to the browser first if there's any asynchronous work going on. And so that loading component is going to render. And then when all of this data is finished loading, it's then going to stream that data back to the browser. And in this case, we're actually gonna to get to take advantage of the speed and performance benefits that come from using server components. So let's go back and save this and we'll actually see this experience. We'll see the loading indicator here. And then when that data comes in, we actually see the real data. What's amazing though, is now if we go into Web Vitals, we see these numbers are still really good. And that's because the time to first byte is good because we're able to send down the information with the loader at first, and then it's able to render that. So the first contentful paint is good as well. And then it's actually able to load in that asynchronous data after the fact using streaming. So I think this is really neat. It's really amazing how Next.js has this like built into the infrastructure of the framework and it's taken care of for you. I think the one thing that you always have to keep in mind though is to take advantage of this, you have to have this loading component. If you don't have this loading component, if I just rename this to something like loader, if I just have the wrong name for this and I refresh loading, loading, no loading indicator, and then if I check web vital, you'll see I get a poor performance score. So just wanted to make sure that you know if you're taking advantage of server components on Next.js and you want to take advantage of the performance benefits that they promise you, having your loading component inside of that directory is a necessity. It's something that you have to have. Anyway, I'm curious, are you using server components? We're using them throughout the uh, Deals for Devs project. If you're interested in this, you can find it at devs.
www.ghostbusinessdeals.com. We're working on building out our list of deals and then being able to send out notifications through email for people as well. So a lot of fun stuff going on, built with Next.js, built with Zeta, built with Century and Clerk. So lots of fun technologies in there. Anyway, hope this tip with server components helps you and I'll catch you next time.